Hi, and welcome to this gameplay tutorial of Mathable, a board game available on the iPhone and iPad. The developers call it a cross-number game for the whole family, probably because it plays like a crossword game, but with numbers. And if you're a Scrabble fan, you must pick that game up. You will love Mathable even if you don't like math. It's fun, challenging, and it's free, so why not give it a try and see for yourself? So let's take a look at this Mathable game. When we start the app, it opens on the main menu that you see here. This game offers many ways to play. We can play a multiplayer game with friends or with random players on the Game Center network. We can play a single player game against the computer, a multiplayer game with friends on the same device, and soon we'll be able to play on Facebook. Also, we see the option button and the button to remove the ads. As I said earlier, the game is free, but of course, it is supported by ads. If you don't like the ads and enjoy the game, you can always support the developers by removing the ads for $2.99. Let's start a single player game against the computer. As we click on the single player button, we are welcomed by a new window that allows us to set the computer's difficulty and the timer for our turns. We can choose normal or hard difficulty, and we can choose 1, 3, or 5 minutes for our turns. You will notice that the computer plays really fast, so the timer is mostly for us humans. So let's start a normal game with a 3 minute timer. There are 106 tokens in Mathable, and when the game starts, each player receives 7 random tokens. Your 7 tokens are placed on the rack in front of you. As you can see, my tokens are 6, 6, 1, 10, 4, 5, and 72. Let's pause a minute and see what else is showing on the game screen. At the top we see the game's logo, and on the right we see a button that says Menu. This is actually to pause the game. When you tap on it, the app brings up another window to allow us to resume, restart, abandon, or save the game. There's also a button to go to the option page. Let's go back to the game and tap on resume. Right underneath this menu button, we have the scoreboards. One for me, player one, and one for the computer. On top of the scoreboards, we have the timer. The timer is always on the top of the player whose turn it is to play. On the left, we see a button that reads autoplay. This button allows you to ask the computer to play for you if you don't know what token to play and need a little help. I've played a few times and that feature came in handy in more than one occasion, especially when you reach the end of the game and the board is filled with tokens. However, I've noticed that the computer doesn't always make the best decisions for you, so use this feature carefully. Also, you must know that you can use this option only three times during a game. And finally, the autoplay is only available in normal mode. If you set the difficulty to hard, no autoplay for you, my friend. Below the autoplay, we see the token bag. The number on the bag indicates how many tokens it holds at all times, so obviously, the number will decrease as the game goes on. At the bottom from left to right, we see a button that says token list. I mentioned there were 106 tokens in the game, but there are only 46 different numbers. The token list window lists them all for us. Notice that there is one token with the number 0, but 7 tokens with the number 1. Actually, there are 7 tokens for each number from 1 to 10. All the other numbers in the game appear only once. So let's say you receive a 24. Be assured there is not another 24 in the bag. Alright, let's close this window. And don't worry, after just a few games, you'll remember all the numbers included in the game easily and you will rarely need to use this reminder. Next to the token list button, we have the swap button, which allows us to swap any number of tokens from our rack with tokens in the bag. However, know that if you do a swap, you will automatically pass your turn. To do a swap, it's quite simple. You tap on the swap button, you select the tokens you want to swap, and you tap on the swap button again. Or if you change your mind, you tap on cancel, as I will do now because I don't want to swap any token for now. Next to the swap button, we have our rack with our tokens. And at the end, we have a button that reads end turn. This lets the game know that you are ending your turn. Actually, that button has two functions. When we play a token on the board, it changes to say confirm play. As the name suggests, it allows us to confirm each and every move. You will understand as soon as I start playing. Ready? Let's start this game. But before I start playing, I sometimes like to rearrange my tokens from the lowest to the highest number. To do so, it's easy. Just select the tokens and move them to the position you would like, as I'm doing now. 
All right, let's go. The goal of Mathable is to score the most points by creating simple math equations using two tokens on the board and one token from your rack. That's why the board comes with four tokens already placed in the center. The math operations allowed are additions, subtractions, multiplications, and divisions. As you can see, I can play my one token in many different locations on the board. I can put it next to the 4 as 4 minus 3 equals 1, and I can put it next to the 3 too, on any side of the two tokens on the board. It doesn't matter. I can put it next to the 2, 2 minus 1 equals 1, and again, I can put it on any side. Let's put it next to the 4 and then confirm. I placed a 1 and that's my score. I can now play my 4 on top of the 1 and 3 as 1 plus 3 equals 4. And again, I can put it at the bottom. On either side, it doesn't matter. But for now, I will put that 4 back on my rack so I can show you something new. You see the blue squares with the math operators on them? They are called restriction squares, meaning you have to use the operator displayed on them to play your token. So for the square next to the 4 and 1, we can only do an addition. Since the square shows an addition, the only operation we can do is 4 plus 1 equals 5. And luckily, we have a 5. So let's play the 5 and confirm. But hold on now. Look what is happening. My token bag is shaking. This is a signal to let me know that I can take a free token. You see, whenever you play a token on a blue square, you can take a free token from the bag. To request your free token, simply tap on the bag. If you don't want the free token, just ignore the bag, continue playing, or end your turn. I, for one, always take the free token. The only time this is not wise is when you know you can place all your remaining tokens on the board. Because, as it turns out, when you start your turn with 7 tokens and manage to finish your turn with an empty rack, you get a 50 point bonus, and of course, most of the time, a 50 point bonus is better than a free token. So, if you ask me, I'd say if you think you can play all your tokens in one turn, do not request new ones. If not, always take your free ones. They give you more options to play, an opportunity to block your opponents, a higher score, etc. So I will take my free token. Ooh, a 63. Lucky me. I hate big numbers when the game begins, but on top of that, a 63? Thanks. So let's continue. I will play the 4 now and confirm. Never forget to confirm after placing each token. Let's play the 6 here. 4 plus 2 equals 6. No. You know what? Let's put it at the bottom so I can play the 10 I have here on my rack. Alright, let's confirm. And now let's play the 10. You see players? Always think about your next move or your opponent's next move when you play Mathable. Always look on your rack for the next tokens you can play. Okay. So the last token I can play is that other 6. Should I do a 4 plus 2 or 10 minus 4? Yeah, let's do 10 minus 4. Alright, let's confirm. Let's make sure there's nothing else I can do. Nope, I can't play the 63 or the 72, so I will just end my turn and let my opponent play. At the end of our turns, the computer refills our rack with tokens from the bag, so we always start our next turn with 7 tokens. Of course, provided that there are enough tokens left in the bag. So now I just received an 18, an 8, a 2, a 3, and a 40, plus of course the 63 and 72 from the last turn. When it's the opponent's turn, we cannot touch our tokens. So let's see what the opponent is going to play. Did you see how fast the computer played? I told you the timer was only for us humans. It will however explain its moves. So let's see. 2 minus 1 equals 1, 3 plus 4 equals 7, 7 plus 1 equals 8, 10 minus 6 equals 4, for a total score of 20. Not bad, but after one turn, I'm in the lead with 32. Now my turn to play. I will play the 3. 2 plus 1 equals 3, now my score is 35. And I will play the 2 here, but hold on, check this out. 3 minus 1 equals 2, and 6 minus 4 equals 2. So by placing my 2 here, I make a multiple equation with one token. Therefore, each equation will count as you see. Let's confirm. And there you go. 2 points for 6 minus 4, and 2 points for 3 minus 1. 
Sure, it's only four points, but imagine if you play a 64 in a multiple equation situation. Let's continue. I can play the 8 in many locations. 8 times 1 equals 8, or 6 plus 2 equals 8, but I will put it here. 4 times 2 equals 8. Let's confirm. What else can I play? Nothing? Okay, let's end my turn with a score of 47. Your turn, Mr. Computer. Show me what you got. Whoa, I was just kidding, mate. 7 times 10, 70. 2 times 3, 6. 6 times 5, 30. 2 plus 8, 10. Two plus 30, 32. And finally, 3 plus 6, 9, for a score of 177. Well, you showed me. But the game's not over, we're just starting. Now I have 18, 63, 4, 8, 2, 40, and 72 to play with. Can I play the 18 on top of the 10 up there? 8 plus 10 equals 18. Well, I can't. Why? Because it's a blue square and the operator is a multiplication meaning I can only play an 80 on that square. So no, I cannot play 18. I can play the 2 though. 1 plus 1 equals 2. The token bag is shaking, and yes, I will take a free token. Ah, a 4. Yes, I can use that. I will play a 4 here. 3 plus 1 equals 4. And use the new 4 to play on the blue square for a new token. Yes, you guessed it. I like receiving new tokens. Most of the time, it's very useful. All right, what will it be? What will it be? 36, jackpot! My friends, this is perfect. Look at my next two moves. First, I will play the 40 next to the four. 10 times four equals 40. And then I will play my 36 as 40 minus four equals 36. You already know about the blue squares. Now I'm going to teach you about the purple and orange squares. As you see on the purple squares, there is a two X and on the orange squares, there's a three X, which means that any token you will place on an orange square will be triple its value, and any token placed on a purple square will be double it. So the 36 I just placed on the purple square will be worth 72 points. Look at my score now. I caught up with the computer in just a few moves, and I'm not done playing. Let's finish the turn. Alright, I can play the 8. 4 plus 4 equals 8. And yes, I will take my free token please. 25, yes, join us, join us, you're very welcome, as I can play you too on a double bonus square. 30 minus 5 equals 25 for a score of 50. Yeah, baby. Okay, nothing else I can play. So I will end my turn and stop the tutorial now, while I'm ahead, and recap everything that we saw together. The menu button to pause the game. The autoplay button to let the computer help us. The token bag. The token list window. The swap button to swap tokens. You know the goal of Mathable is to score the most points by creating simple math equations using two tokens on the board and one token from your rack. You know the math operations allowed are additions, subtractions, multiplications, and divisions. You know what the blue restriction squares mean and that you get to request a free token when you play on them. You know about the 50 bonus points when you start your turn with 7 tokens and clean up your rack. It's important to remember that. You know about doing multiple equations with only one token. And finally, you know about the purple double score bonus squares and the orange triple score bonus squares. The game ends when there are no more tokens in the bag and one player clears out his rack. The game ends when there are no more tokens in the bag and all players pass their turns once. The game ends when there are tokens in the bag but all players still swap or pass their turns twice in a row. If you have any token on your rack when the game ends, the combined points of your tokens will be subtracted from your score. Well, that's it. You pretty much know everything about Mathable. All you need to do now is practice and play. As you can tell, I love this game. It's fun, addictive, challenging. You can play alone, against the computer, or with friends or random players through Game Center. I highly recommend it. It's free. Get your copy now. The link is in the description below. That's it for now. I'm going to get back to my game and try to beat that computer. Go get your copy and enjoy.